Today, we study the next chapter titled, The Supreme Individuals, Pali, Etadaga, which means the foremost, or the one standing at the pinnacle in a specific field. If we merely skim through the texts, this chapter might not seem special, as it simply recounts the lives of the noble disciples of the Buddha. However, this is only a superficial reading. Upon closer examination, several essential points demand our attention. For those aspiring toward liberation, the ultimate concern is to end the cycle of samsara, rebirth. However, some may think that specific characteristics or skills, such as excelling in a particular area, are secondary or less significant. In truth, the matter is more complex. Depending on the psychological inclinations and accumulated merits of individuals cultivated over countless lifetimes, each person follows a unique path of practice. Because of this diversity in practice, by the final lifetime when one attains sainthood, every enlightened being, alongside the universal achievement of eradicating defilements and fetters, kalesa and asava, retains a distinct specialty. Some excel in developing wisdom, others in meditative absorption, samadhi, or supernatural powers, and so forth. In this study, we revisit the lives of the noble disciples of the Buddha, including the great monks and nuns, and the Buddha himself. Each unique trait, bhikkhu guna, is a vital element of the path. For example, while the Buddha's time is often associated with the wisdom of Sariputta, the commentary also enumerates other saints known for similar traits. The Etadaga list includes 47 noble disciples recognized as number one in their respective domains among the Savaka, Buddha's disciples. We are reminded of a quote by Confucius, who humbly acknowledged that he could not match the individual strengths of his disciples such as Mencius or Yen Hui. Yet, they revered him as their master because he possessed an all-encompassing balance. In contrast, the Buddha, as the fully enlightened one, outshines all his disciples in every respect, whether it be wisdom, supernatural powers, ascetic practices, or discipline. The disciples are recognized as foremost only within the Sangha, while their skills and traits reflect specific aspects of the Buddha's comprehensive teachings. To illustrate this diversity, we begin with the story of the Buddha's first disciple, Kandana, Pali, Anna Kandana. Every Buddha initially embarks on their journey alone, and Kandana was the first to attain Sotapanna, stream entry, upon hearing the Buddha's first sermon, the Dhammakaka Pavavatna Sutta, at Deer Park. The life of Kandana demonstrates not only his pivotal role in the founding of the Sangha but also the distinctive traits that led to his recognition as Etadaga in seniority, retanyu, foremost in seniority. From his early determination to join the Buddha to his ascetic life among wild elephants, Kandana embodied humility, gratitude, and a clear sense of purpose. He lived for twelve years after attaining arahantship and passed away in seclusion. His funeral, attended by celestial beings and noble monks, was among the most grandiose of the time. Similarly, the Buddha's two chief disciples, Sariputta and Magallana, were unparalleled in wisdom and meditative attainments, respectively. Each had cultivated their unique qualities over countless lifetimes. Sariputta, revered for his intellect and ability to elucidate the Dhamma, was second only to the Buddha in wisdom. Magallana, with his mastery of supernatural powers, Idi, epitomized meditative excellence. Both served as pillars of the Sangha, exemplifying complementary paths to enlightenment. This chapter underscores the rich tapestry of qualities embodied by the noble disciples. Each trait reflects a specific parami, perfection, cultivated over lifetimes. The foremost designation highlights not competition but the individual brilliance that contributes to the collective illumination of the Dhamma. The Buddha responded, Do whatever you feel is timely and appropriate. However, as you are one of the two chief disciples of the Sangha, before departing, you should teach the Dharma to benefit others. Show them your realization, your understanding, and your achievements. Hearing this, the Venerable Maha Magalana bowed to the Buddha, employed his extraordinary supernatural abilities, and gave a profound Dharma discourse. He hovered mid-air, delivering the teachings like waves upon waves of an endless ocean. After completing his discourse, he prostrated before the Buddha one final time, stepped back, and disappeared. That evening, he entered Paranirvana at Kalasila. Seven days later, his grand funeral, personally attended by the Buddha, took place. Heavenly beings showered flowers, filling the area knee-deep, with a fragrance that permeated the air. It was regarded as one of the two grandest and most magnificent funerals in Buddhist history. Such was his prominence. The filial piety of Venerable Sariputta was unparalleled. Once, while sitting in his fragrance-filled abode in the forest, 
Venerable Sariputta, through his divine ear, heard a voice. Please allow me to meet you. I am your mother from a past life, five eons ago. The voice came from a hungry ghost. Initially, guardian deities tried to prevent the ghost from approaching, stating, You cannot disturb the venerable monk while he is in deep meditation. This is not a suitable place for your presence. However, upon hearing this, Sariputta spoke up. Let her come. She was my mother five eons ago. Let her meet me. With his permission, the guardian deity stepped aside, allowing the ghost to approach. It appeared as an emaciated figure, grotesque and pitiful. Meeting Sariputta, the ghost said, I am suffering immensely, and I believe only you, renowned for your virtue of gratitude, can save me. This was true. Sariputta's gratitude and reverence for benefactors were widely known. For instance, he once accepted as a disciple an elderly man whom everyone else had rejected. When asked why, Sariputta explained, There are two reasons. First, I see that he possesses the qualities to become an exceptional disciple. Second, long ago, when he was still strong, he offered me a bowl of rice gruel. That act of generosity sustained me for a meal. How could I now abandon him in his old age? Touched by the ghost's plea, Sariputta assured her, I will help you tomorrow. The following morning, Sariputta collected alms, offering the food to the Buddha and the Sangha. He then dedicated the merit from this act to his former mother. Within moments, the ghost transformed into a celestial being of unparalleled beauty, radiant and resplendent. When Sariputta reached the age of 80, understanding the tradition that great disciples of the Buddha must enter Parinirvana before the teacher, he sought to fulfill his filial duty. He thought, Rahula has passed away in the celestial realms. Anakandana entered Parinirvana in the mountains among the elephants. As for me, where should I end my journey? I must return to my village and guide my mother, who remains entangled in wrong views despite being the mother of seven arahants. Only I can lead her to the path. That evening, after paying respects to the Buddha, Sariputta returned to his birthplace. His mother, a wealthy and successful businesswoman, had kept his room unchanged for 84 years since the day he left to renounce the world. She had cleaned it daily, replaced the decorations, and awaited his return. When he arrived, she prepared the room for his stay. That night, divine beings, Indra, Brahma, and other celestial figures, visited to pay homage to Sariputta. In the early hours of the morning, his mother entered his room and asked, Why was your room glowing all night? What happened? Sariputta explained, Brahma and other celestial beings came to honor me. Shocked, she asked, I have worshipped Brahma my entire life. How could he come to honor you, my son? Sariputta gently replied, Mother, think about this. If Brahma bows to me, what does that say about the greatness of my teacher? Hearing this, she was deeply moved. Sariputta then expounded the four noble truths to her. Inspired by his teachings, she attained the stage of stream entry, Sotapanna. Turning to his brother Kunda, Sariputta asked, what time is it now? Kunda replied, It is the final watch of the night. Sariputta then addressed the monks. My dear brothers, if I have ever done or said anything to upset you, please forgive me. Now, I am leaving. His final words were, All conditioned things are impermanent. Strive diligently to purify your mind. With that, the venerable Sariputta covered his face with his robe, entered the first jhana, and progressively ascended through the meditative absorptions. He descended back to the fourth jhana, and from there, peacefully passed into Paranirvana. The earth trembled in response to the passing of this extraordinary being. Such was the life of Sariputta, venerated as the embodiment of supreme wisdom and unparalleled filial devotion. The Buddha's praise for Sariputta. When the venerable Ananda heard about Sariputta's Paranirvana, 
he immediately informed the Buddha. Upon hearing the news, the Buddha expressed profound emotion. Ananda, it is as if the great city of Rajagaha had lost its chief gatekeeper, as if the massive, towering Himalayan peak had collapsed, or as if the sun and the moon had vanished from the sky. Sariputta was a rare being, a true treasure of this world. He was my right-hand disciple, second to none in wisdom, who always shared the Dharma with profound clarity, benefiting countless beings. His passing leaves a void that no one else can fill. At this moment, the Buddha shared a touching analogy. It is like losing a limb of the body. Though the other limbs remain, the loss of one is deeply felt. Sariputta was not merely a disciple. He was like a great companion to me in spreading the Dharma. Yet, even in this loss, we must understand the nature of impermanence. The Buddha then addressed the assembly. Monks, consider the passing of Sariputta and learn from it. Contemplate impermanence, the dissolution of conditioned things, and the ultimate peace of nirvana. Strive diligently to practice and realize the truth. The Legacy of Sariputta The life and teachings of Venerable Sariputta continue to inspire countless followers of the Buddha. His exceptional wisdom, profound compassion, and unwavering gratitude remain a shining example of the ideal disciple. Throughout his life, he embodied the Buddha's teachings in both thought and action, leaving behind a legacy that transcends time. Even now, when reflecting on Sariputta's life, one cannot help but be moved by his virtues of wisdom, filial piety, and dedication to the Dharma. His example reminds us of the importance of perseverance, selflessness, and gratitude. May the story of Sariputta inspire us all to walk the noble path, to cherish the teachings of the Buddha, and to live a life of virtue and wisdom.